Hi, it's Madeline. I hope you're all doing really well and you're having a great day wherever you are. I have a new tutorial today which is for this hexagon granny square crochet bag. It is a really nice and simple satisfying bag to make that works up really quickly and it makes this big hexagon shape which also I think looks a bit like a star when it's all put together which I kind of love. Um, you can make it bigger or smaller by simply adjusting the size of the hexagons and it only uses simple stitches so you can chill out and watch TV while you make it or whatever you like to do. So if you like this tutorial and you want to give it a thumbs up that would be great. If you subscribe I have lots of other videos on my channel and I will also make sure to leave links below to the materials you used and the hook size etc so make sure to um, check the description. Okay, enough talking and let's get started. So we're going to start off with a magic ring. So you can make that however you like to. This is the method that I normally use, wrapping over twice and then making the ring. And I've just got a little video um, showing up here if that was a little bit quick for you and you need to follow that, um, that goes through how to make that magic ring. And now we're going to chain three and then add two. So that makes a total of five. I said chain three, then add two, because three counts for one double crochet and two is the gap. So we've chained five and those first three chains count as our first double crochet. So then we're going to put a double crochet right into the middle of that ring. So that's just yarn over, go straight in through the ring, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the remaining two and that is your double crochet. So then we're going to make our first double crochet cluster. So that is going to be three double crochets. So we're going to do two more. Then we're going to make our corner spaces. So our corner spaces are going to be two chains. And we're going to end up with six of these corners making a hexagon. So yarn over and make another double crochet cluster of three. And in total you're going to want to make five of these. So you're going to do five lots of three double crochets with two spaces in between each or two chains as a space between each. And once you've done those five, I'll meet you to show you how we finish up this round. Okay, so here I'm just putting in the last double crochet in that cluster of three, the fifth one. I'm chaining two to make a space. And then, of course, I've got that first double crochet was that chain of three. So I only need to put in two more to make that third, um, make that last cluster, sorry, to make the sixth cluster. So here I'm just going to put in two double crochets. And then we're going to want to close up that ring to join it all together. So if you've made the magic ring the same way that I have, you'll have the two threads making up the ring and the starting tail. And what you'll find when you pull on the starting tail is it moves one of those threads. And um, this will tell you which of the threads uh, you'll be able to pull through at the end. So what I mean is, whichever one moves, you don't want to pull that one, you want to pull the other one. <laughs> if that makes sense. So here, this one didn't move, so I'm going to pull this through and it's going to close up the other thread. So you can see there, that one's pulling in, it's pulling the um, stitches together and you can just try pulling both and see which one starts to close it up. And then you'll find that when you pull through the yarn tail, mine's giving me a bit of hassle, 
but um, when you pull the yarn tail through, it's going to pull through that excess and it closes up beautifully. And that's brought the ring together. So just pull that however tight you want. I want to leave a little hole in the centre. I'm happy with that so we can continue working to the next round. So I've brought those two last double crochets up against those three chains to begin with and now we need to join. So find your third chain from when you originally did those five chains, find the third one and you're going to join to that with a slip stitch. So straight through that third chain, pull through and pull through. And then you're going to slip stitch directly into the first space. Okay, so we're ready to start round two. So we're gonna start again by chaining five. So this is how you're gonna be starting each round. And after this, once you've got the swing of things, it's really simple. Um, you're starting off with those five chains and then into the same gap, the same space there, you're gonna put in three double crochets. So that's your first cluster. Then you're going to chain one, and you're chaining one because that is the side. You're not working into the actual um, corner. This is your corner. So in the corners, there are six corners. You're going to be putting in your cluster of three. And then you'll chain two, and that maintains the corner. So you're always going to be maintaining six corners to keep the hexagon shape. So you can add little markers in each of the corners in case you get confused. But you can kind of see which bits are the sides as you go. So here, once you've done two clusters, this is your side again. So you go chain one. That's your corner, your new corner. Here's your side, your previous cluster of three. One chain and put in another cluster of three double crochets. Chain two to maintain the corner and continue around. Now, when you get back to the beginning, of course, you've put in that last corner of the two double crochet clusters with the two space and you're going to need to complete that first cluster that had the three chains as one of your double crochets. So into that space you're going to put two double crochets and then same as before you're going to join to the third chain with a slip stitch and then slip stitch into the gap straight after that. Now that's your round two finished. So we're pretty much repeating this. It, it is just this pattern repeated each row, gradually getting bigger so your sides get longer, but you still have your six corners. So we'll just do a few together for round three. You're going to start by chaining five, as always. Then you're going to put your cluster of three double crochets into that corner. Then you're going to chain one because it's the side and put three double crochets into the next space.
then you chain one again because you're working on the side and this is your next corner. So in here you're going to do your two clusters separated by two chains. and just continue that around until you have the size that you want. So you can make this hexagon as big or as small as you want. And this is mine when it's finished. In total, I did seven rows and um, these are the pieces I'm gonna use for the back. So when you first do them, they're going to be a little bit um, uh, kind of bent like this. They're not gonna be perfectly flat. Uh, that's not a problem. The best thing to do is to block them for a little while. So I do mine. I don't have any fancy um, kit for blocking mine. I just spray them with a bottle of water and then I put them on cardboard with pins around the edges overnight and it just helps flatten them out enough that it uh, improves the shape of the bag overall. Now here what I'm doing is I'm just um, arranging the hexagon so you can see how it makes the bag. So I've put two hexagons facing wrong sides together for the centre and then I've folded over two of the hexagons to make the sides and that will be the top of the bag up there. And then I'm going to take three more that are all going to be folded over and I'm going to put them around each side of the hexagon. And what we'll be doing is seaming all of this together. So once you've made your hexagons, it's really simple. You've pretty much done all of the work. And in total here, I have um, seven hexagons. So this is the next day after blocking them overnight. And you can see they just generally look a lot flatter and it makes quite a difference, especially to those um, centerpieces. So I've just rearranged them so they're all in the correct position again and I'm just double checking they're all facing the right way. So the wrong sides are against each other, the right sides are facing out, etc. Just before we get started. And to start seaming, I'm going to seam all of these side pieces to the main piece. So let's start by putting these two pieces together. So we're going to be starting from the corners of both. So you see how you have the actual corner space? You're not going to be working straight into that. You're going to be working into the first top of the first double crochet. So you've got the V-stitch on top and you're going to be working into there. But what we're doing is um, a front laying slip stitch theme, seam even, uh, a front laying stitch, slip stitch seam. <laughs> and um, this means you can see the slip stitch running down the front. I like the effect of this. I mean, you can do this whatever way you prefer in joining together. There's lots of ways to join granny squares, but I like, quite like the way this looks. So what I'm doing is I'm going into that um, front loop only of the double crochet on both sides. So that means you're going into the um, part of the V-stitch here that's facing you, that's closest to you on this side and furthest away from you on the other side. Now, when I was filming this, I made a bit of a mistake and um, I didn't notice that I actually went into the back loop of this other side. So just to confirm here, it is the loop on this other piece that's furthest away from you. So the back loop only. Now I did this right on the next one. So we'll just keep going through this together and you'll see what I mean. So it shouldn't be this loop. It should be the other side of the V-stitch. But in theory, it still shows you you're basically working through both sides. You're grabbing your yarn and you're pulling through both sides to start. And then to start this off, you're going to just chain one. Then we're going to work into the next stitch along, so that's on top of your next double crochet. And again, you're picking up the side of the V-stitch that's closest to you on the piece that's closest to you. 
and the side of the view stitch that's furthest away from you on the piece that's furthest away from you. So the kind of front loops only if both sides are facing you. And this is what makes the slip stitch lay on top of the seam. So I'll show you this here, going through the front of the V-stitch there, and going through the equivalent on the other side, and that is the two correct parts of the V-stitch you should be picking up, so I just paused it there so you could see it really clearly. And then you're going to pull through both and pull through the loop on your hook, and that is your first slip stitch. Now let's do this third one together, same thing again, going through the front loops of those stitches and then you've reached your first chain. So I'm not sure why but for some reason the camera stopped filming there and I never realised so I came back to edit later, but essentially you just go into the chain on both sides, right in the middle of the chain and put in another slip stitch and you'll find yourself all the way down the bottom here and we're actually at the corner, so I can kind of show you with the chains that are at the corner here. There's two chains at the corner, and of course there's one chain the whole way down the side in between each of the clusters. So where there's two chains at this corner, we're going to be changing the parts that we're joining because we're going to be adding another hexagon. So what I'm going to do is find the first chain of the two, which is just there, and I'm just going to go right into the middle of that chain. I'm going to find the corresponding chain the other side, just there, go into the middle of that, and I'm going to finish that off with a slip stitch. So then let's grab our next piece and make sure everything is still aligned the way that it should be. So I'm going to grab this piece, I'm going to double check that it fits the way that it should on the side. I'm going to find that corner to start with, and then I'm going to be looking for that second chain. That's where we're going to start with this one. We're starting on the second chain, and we're joining it to the second chain of this central piece. So get your pieces all lined up and go right to the middle of that second chain. And then find the equivalent chain on the other side that we just showed before. Wiggle your hook through and add a slip stitch to start the next section. And then you're just going to continue along um, exactly the same way down this side, join the next piece, join the next piece, until you have attached um, each of the hexagons around the five sides of this central hexagon. And this is what it's going to look like when you've finished. You've got this nice um, seam running around the front, and you can just um, join those last double crochets together right at the end there, equivalent to where you started. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to um, pull through so that you have a really nice long yarn tail to weave in and just cut that off. And there you have one half done, so you can either go and weave in those yarn tails now, or you can be lazy like I normally am and leave them all till the end, depends how organised you are and how your brain works. So now we can start working on the other seams. Okay, so flip your work over, and then we can work on those um, attachments on the other side. 
before we do the seams between each of those folded sections. So what we're going to do first is get the other major hexagon piece and um, put it facing the right way and start joining those seams together. And that's going to be in exactly the same way as what I just showed you on the other side. So you can always just skip back to the start of the central seams and um, follow that again to work your way around. And now I've skipped ahead a bit and I've done all that front central seaming and I've seamed four, uh, three of the sides. There's going to be four seams going around the sides of the hexagons, the folded hexagons that you're going to need to do. And you can see I've done three of them there and I'm going to show you how to do these on this last one. So I started all of my seams around the folded hexagons uh, from the same side. They don't really look very different where you start or where you finish, but um, just for consistency, I did it this way. So I started from this side, and to begin what we're going to do is find those um, second chains on both sides of the hexagons, the ones that you wouldn't have picked up before when you joined it to the central seam. So I'm going to find that on both sides, and I'm going to start off same as normal, picking up, going straight through the middle of the chain. This one's a little bit tight because I've seen the other way. So just wiggle that hook in there and use the fingernail method if you have to. And we'll just work all the way along, very similarly to before. But I just want to show you um, what this looks like. So we go straight into this chain, into the chain on the other side exactly the same as when we were seaming around the middle. I just like to straight straight off pull my yarn through and then weave it in later and then chain one. So here we go. First double crochet into the front loop closest to me. Again, fingernail method is coming into play and then the loop furthest away on the other side and pulling through into a slip stitch and then you're just going to continue all the way along exactly as you did when you were joining um, around the central piece but of course in this case when you get to the corner that has two chains you don't need to add it to anything else so you just join both two chains to each other so it's really simple, and I will meet you when you get to the other side. So here, just make sure you don't skip those last chains. Make sure you get right into the last chains, coming up to the central seam. So it looks super neat, and then just finish off by pulling through and cutting a nice long yarn tail to weave in. So when you weave these ends in, you can just weave them in right under the other seam and it will give you something to work off. Remember to weave in a few different directions, backwards and forwards, to make them nice and secure. Weave in those top ends that I said I was going to be lazy and leave, I always do. And then we'll get started on doing the straps. So the straps I made are really simple. You're just going to start with a slip knot. And I've actually gone up to a 5mm hook here, so to make give it a slightly chunkier feel. Um, and you're going to start by chaining two. And then you're going to go back and work into that first chain. And you're going to put in a single crochet. Now when you've done that, you'll notice there's this loop that you can work into that second chain loop. So you're going to stick your hook through there and surprise surprise yarn over and put another single crochet. So this is like a rotated single crochet repeat. All you're doing is single crochets and it gives this brilliant like kind of braided cord look. So now you'll notice you've got two loops down the side when you turn that slightly clockwise. Or anti-clockwise? No I think it's clockwise. This time you're going to work through both loops. 
so try not to crochet too tight i have a tendency to be overly to crochet too tight and this gets really tricky so i'm having to wiggle a little bit there because i did slightly pull through too much so pull up slightly keep it loose and continue with those single crochets each time now going into the two chains at the side two loops at the side sorry and then putting in your single crochet if you're working with cotton like mine as well that comes apart a little bit just go slow so you can make sure that you get through um, all of the threads of your yarn and you're just going to repeat this until you have the length that you want And here you go, here is the full strap there and I had to join some more yarn halfway through so that's why there's some yarn tails in it there and I've got another one that I've made and you're going to need two in total and I just want to make sure they're exactly the same length so I'm lining them up and double checking they're the same length and then I'm just going to pull through I'd actually almost finished my yarn there so I just pulled all the way through but you would just pull up a loop and cut off like you normally would leaving a nice long yarn tail to attach that to the sides of the bag. So just before we start, this is how I attach them. This is what they look like when they're attached. And so I've attached three, so I've attached one side fully, one side I've attached one, because what I like to do is to attach each strap both to one side and to loop them at the top. Um, you could attach them totally differently if you wanted to. You could attach them however you think looks best. But I quite like this loop look. Either way, you're probably going to want to attach them in the same place. Which for me is either side of that point at the top of the hexagon. So here I've just wrapped my cords around each other so they have that chain link at the top. And I'm just trying to keep it roughly straight, although it's not a massive problem for this because the it's a cord so it doesn't look any different from any angle you know I just wanted to make sure it's not twisted and then I'm going to show you how to attach it onto the other side of that double cluster so you want to take your darning needle and loop it on to the end of your strap so we're going to be putting it in there and what I'm going to do to start off with is just um, push the yarn through the side of the strap itself so it pulls in that little um, knot at the end and then it attaches straight to the bag so tug that through a little bit till you're happy with that And then to attach the bag, what I like to do is come down through um, the double crochet stitch. So I'll show you what I mean here. Once I get myself all aligned so I can actually show you properly. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to loop it into that first double crochet stitch and um, work across that space so I'm going to go straight down the center of that double crochet stitch and I'm going to pick up the third loop at the back like this now the third loop gave me a bit of a hard time but um, you can see that I'm picking up the um, back loop of that double crochet stitch and the third loop at the front there pull your yarn all the way through hold that cord up how you want it to kind of sit at the top and then you're going to go over to the double crochet on the other side go up through the third loop and through the middle of that double crochet stitch pull straight up to the top put it nice and tight don't worry about keeping it totally attached at this point because we're now going to loop back through to attach it 
so then make sure it hasn't twisted too much and go back in straight straight through the side of the strap it's like a tongue twister straight through the side of the strap and you're just going to repeat that a few times so you're just securing it to those um, double crochet stitches Now I've done it twice there and it looks pretty secure, so to make it look neater at the top and kind of improve that connection between the bag and the straps, I want to um, start wrapping around. So I'm doing one last um, uh, pull of the yarn through the actual strap and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yarn and I'm going to wrap it around. So I've turned it the other way just so that I'm looking at the side on the outside of the bag so I can make sure that side is neat. Pulling it through nice and tight and then I'm going to wrap around maybe four or five times, just enough to cover that connection at the bottom. So once you're happy with how that looks, and that's okay, I mean, nobody is ever going to look at this particular connection in crazy detail apart from you, I can promise. Um, it just it makes it look a bit neater joining the bag. You just want to um, make sure your needle is still threaded. So I'm just going to quickly re-thread mine. I'm just holding on to the um, parts where I just wrapped around the yarn there so it doesn't move and just um, secure that yarn down the back, so on the inside. Push through the, line you, the yarn loop that you made to secure. So I'm just going to rush through this bit where I reconnect my yarn because I'm uncoordinated <laughs> so you don't have to sit there for hours watching me literally try to thread a needle. So you're just going to want to take that yarn end and weave it down into the body of the bag a few more times just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And as an optional last finishing touch, I like to go around the top of these um, hexagons and just take a yarn, um, another piece of, of yarn, and just wrap a few times to join those connections. And I think because you wrap at the top, it looks quite nice as well. It looks quite consistent. Um, I'm just literally going round, I think, three times in total. Just to give it a nice, neat finish not pull it too tight and on the inside I'm literally going to do a basic knot and then I'll just weave in those yarn tail ends. So there you have it, your own hexagon granny square bag. I hope you've had fun making this and that you get lots of use out of it. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. It really does help me with continuing to make these tutorials. And I hope you have an amazing day and see you in the next one.